Welcome, and welcome back, everybody, to the OK Grognard Show. Today is Monday, November 28th, 2022, 10 a.m. Central, in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. This is our uh, third to last show. After this week, we have two more for the year. Then we take our winter hiatus, and we will be back in January. I believe... uh, I believe we're off for four weeks. So we've got a show on the 5th and the 12th, and then we're off, and we're back on the 16th. So a little bit of a winter break like we do every year, and uh, we'll be back and better than ever. I don't know. Is that a thing? Better than ever, really? Today we're looking at the... Wiz Kids D and D Classic Collection Monsters A to C. It is a uh, nifty little collection. I've got a copy here, <clears throat> and we'll dig into it in a little while. But uh, for the sake of imagery being good and better and all of that stuff, I thought I'd go through some images of it first. And discuss those things so that uh, everyone can get a very clear picture of what's in this. There are seven monsters recreated. And these are recreated from the uh, first edition illustrations in the first edition advanced Dungeons and Dragons monster manual. That came out in 77. When this came out, you know, there was no Player's Handbook or Dungeon Master's Guide for first edition. So we just incorporated these creatures into our OD&D games. Hence the original plus advanced um, (coughs) sticker, logo, whatever you want to call it, above my head that uh, is often on these often on these videos because it was always a an amalgam and quite honestly if there wasn't something covered in the first edition books we did it the way we had always done it before so while it became increasingly first edition there was always a hint a taste a little bit of od and d original dungeon and dragons in there and that's all good So what else? Uh, Let's see. This picture shows the box. It is a nifty box. It's a kind of a display case. And uh, it has a little bit of Velcro. Holding it up. Holding it together. The... I guess it's better this way. Hard to say. A little bit of Velcro little spots in the corners doing that it opens up from the top to get the stuff out I already took the cello tape off of it and holding the two plastic um, cradles together so that I don't have to do that on camera today so but uh, just be warned do it slowly it doesn't damage the box I was concerned about that but it did not so that was a good thing what do we got inside here's the look at it you can see upper left and lower left corners those little velcro spots it tells you what they are the ankeg the basilisk which is down here lower left the beholder boule lower right the uh, carrion crawler upper right the chimera of course middle the cockatrice to the right center and the kwatu the left center of the displayed minis now you're probably already noticing some size discrepancies as it were and uh we'll talk about those as we go into a little bit more here but don't worry, we will address that. The back of the box looks like this. D&D Classic Collection Monsters A to C is highly compatible. 
highly collectible set of pre-painted miniatures that is inspired by iconic monsters from the original Dungeons & Dragons Monster Manual. It should say first edition. It is the original Monster Manual because although there was a basic set that came out before it and before AD&D and there was the original Dungeon Master's Guide. There was no Monster Manual for either of those. So it is the original Monster Manual. Fair to say it. <clears throat> kind of a cool picture here. Although, let's be honest, these monsters do not appear in the Classic Collection because A to C doesn't cover it. Let's uh, look a little more closely at the actual figures or a, an image of the figures. They're actually very nice. Again, you'll see some size discrepancies. Here they are with a black background image that I found. And the backs of them. And then we have the three smaller ones with a tight, tight look at them. But let's look at the entries for each of the creatures and look at them with a critical eye so that we can uh, be sure we know what we're talking about. The Ankeg, and I think we're focusing mainly on the size here, large, 10 to 20 feet long. So, what do we got? Well, let's see. Why don't we open it up and pull them out individually now so that we can discuss them and it comes out easy enough. We'll pull the top off the plastic cradle. Very good. We'll get each of these out so we can discuss them in turn. They are pretty, pretty nice. I like that they use clear bases. Some people would suggest that uh, they like the regular black bases, but I like clear bases for it. For these here, I like that uh, they're not assuming they need to be green or gray or <clears throat> some other color. It also distinguishes them from the regular creatures. So what do we got here? We got the Anheg. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, I'm really not good at this, am I? So there it is. And uh, my buddy Scott painted this elf miniature, so let's put that right next to it. Of course, I'm making sure it's done. Give it some scale. Now it says 10 to 20 feet, so I guess we could call this 10 feet and not be wrong. Oop, because I'm looking at the carrion crawler. What a knucklehead. All right, here you go. On Hag with the elf next to it. And in this case, I think we're looking at 13, 14, 15 feet if we were to uncoil it. So there you go, 10 to 20 feet long. This one fits the scale, and I think it does it nicely. We look next at the basilisk. It says seven feet long, and don't forget there's a tail on here. So with the tail, I think we're actually looking a little longer. And here is next to my elf. My, my friend Scott's elf. That is a uh, early Ralph Partha figure. So the basilisk looks pretty good in person. Let's hold it up by the tail and put it right up in front of the camera like that. There we go. So size-wise, I think we're good. That, by the way, and let's give some credit here. The Anheg is uncredited. The four people doing artwork for the first edition Monster Manual were Dave Sutherland, who also did the cover. 
Dave Trampier, Don Wells, and Tom Wom. Tom Wom is the last of the individuals of the MLS that are with us today. Um, Anheg does not have a signature around it. I'm assuming it's Gene Wells because the one with Tom, the Beholder's signature is right on it and the signatures of uh, Dave Sutherland and Dave Trampier are right on their images too. So the uncredited, uncredited ones, I've got to assume are Gene Wells. Looking at this, of course, Dave Trampier on the Basilisk and the Tom Wom Beholder. Now the Tom the beholder says, says uh, four to six feet, and if we hold up our elf right next to it, we are much bigger than that. And if I had to guess, because I don't know what's in their brains when they make these things, I would have to guess that we're talking about making them, nudging them closer toward a modern edition game's suggested sizes for these creatures because they do still want to sell them to as many fans as possible. I don't mind it with the Beholder. I don't mind this almost softball size Beholder. Let's call it handball size Beholder because... Uh, I don't mind my evil, deadly, probably on their own creatures being a little bigger and beastlier. Tough for him to get through a doorway, a standard dungeon doorway. So we'll say that. But who's to say he can't squeeze through whatever he wants? Why can't he be squeezable? So I would say that's just fine. I like it well enough, so there you go. The next one on the list, the Boule, again, size 9.5 feet tall, 12 feet long. Well, I think tall-wise, it's not quite what it should be. I think it's almost as long as it should be according to first edition sizes so I'm not too chuffed about that one chuffed is that the wrong word chafed about that one chuffed is when you're excited isn't it I tried to sound cool there like our British friends who I love so much in case they're watching there you go anyway the boule looks pretty good I think it's uh I think uh, the carapace, the uh, the meatiness of it, the thickness of the legs, I think they capture what it should be very nicely. So I'm I'm happy enough with the size on that one. Carrion crawler, nine feet long. Oh yeah, they're right on with this one. And I love the tentacles coming out of the mouth. It's a Slightly different than the image, which, by the way, DCS, Dave Sutherland on this one. I think the the face is slightly different, but that's okay. They all come out, and I think that having them in a bunch and just peeling off at the end makes them sturdier, less prone to potential breakage. Hey, let me back this up just for a second. DCS again on the boule. So, Dave Sutherland on that, Dave Sutherland on the Carrion Crawler, and we're all there on those. What do we got next? The Chimera. Now, this one, four feet at the shoulder. Now, this is much, much bigger than, than uh, Chimeras of, uh, of first edition fame. And let's face it, four feet at the shoulder, body of a lion... That would not be the biggest lion you could have out there. So I think making it a little bigger is okay. I like the goat head. I like the dragon head. I think they look good. 
on the model. I think the paint job is very nice on all of these, by the way. There it is next to our Elfie friend, courtesy of our buddy Scott, who sent me a few miniatures not that long ago that he had painted on his on his uh, on his dime on his time. Very kind of him. He was clearing some out to make room for more. Yep, so this is a beauty. It's big. And as with the Beholder, I'm okay to have one miniature that's a big representative of the species. I have other WizKids Beholders and other... I have uh, one or two other Chimeras. They're from other lines. So... We're good on those. We're very good on those. No credit on this image here, so I'm going to have to guess Don Wells. Don Wells. Gene Wells. Don Wells, of course, was Marianne on Gilligan's Island. So, there you go. Now you know where my head's at. Four feet at the shoulder. I'd say this is more like six feet at the shoulder, if not a little more. So, we're talking like a third bigger than normal cockatrice dcs again this is a dave sutherland inspired miniature we'll get that up a little closer there we go next to our elfie friend It is meant to be small. I think this is the perfect size for this one. It looks really good. They did a nice job of... <clears throat> I don't know. It's not really blending, but the wings are trickier on this one than they are on the bigger Chimera. So, well done on that. And again, all of the, all of the paint jobs. And you'll see it on this Coatl, too which is a Dave Trampier. 12 feet long? Well, you know, it's got a really long tail. That's the way the image is in the book. That's what we're looking at on this. I'd say they hit it just about spot on. You put it up next to our buddy. If you uncoiled that tail, I think you'd see it as right on size. So I'm okay with that. And look at the backs of the wings, too, on that. If you can see that. There's a good, good, uh, almost a blending from color to color. Yeah, one of the wings, the green, splashes off onto the feather. The yellow feathers a little bit. So that's not perfect. That's on the front and the back. On the inside and the back side. Let's see if you can see that there too. You can see how the the green moves down onto the yellow. Is that easier to see? Just a little bit. It's not on both sides, so not intentional. Anyway, otherwise, I think pretty good. I like the... I like the uh, choice of colors on these, so I'm happy enough with them. Uh, price tag, 100 bucks. It is 246, two, eight minis. I would have to call at least three, if not four of them. Yeah, four, four of them, five of them, rather. Um, large minis. And three of them small. So, price tag expensive. I don't know. You can get a single WizKids painted, pre painted character mini for eight bucks. So, if the three small ones are eight, that's 24. Some of the larger minis, I think, are, and I'm not talking like ogres, but larger than that minis not dragons but smaller than that minis are um, somewhere in the 12 to 15 dollar range so even if 15 a piece 
you're talking uh, 30, 60, 75 plus the 24. You're kind of right in their norm for pricing. So 100 bucks hits you as seeming expensive out of the gate. Um, considering the extra time they took to sculpt these in a way that gave a nod to that artwork from the first monster manual, uh, that's, that's a little pricey, right? Sculpting is sculpting, but sculpting to emulate a, um, a particular, uh, artist's rendering in a two-dimensional medium is a little trickier, right? And it's got to go through an approval process that is probably a little more active than normal. In any event, the pricing might seem a little high off the top, but I think overall it's in keeping with their pre-painted model pricing. And if you can get a hold of one of these, if you're a nostalgic at all for... Uh, first edition, you probably would want to get one of these if you use minis in games, or even if you want to display it on your shelf. It's basically a double-wide bookcase game-sized box, so it should fit up with your other other gaming items nice enough. You can prop it open in some way or other to show off what's inside if you really want to on your display shelf. Uh, for me, it's always about having the minis and getting them on the table. So I'll save the box. It's a nice box, but that'll be off to the side. And these will be in with my miniatures to travel with me to games so that I can run them. I might have to do something to protect the, uh, eye stocks a little bit. And I think, uh, safety first on... Some of the other figures, the Chimera. Eh, no. It's a, it's a softer plastic, so they're probably pretty safe. In any event, I think it's a good look here. I think they're, uh, they're good minis. We're pushing the time, so I'm going to call it now. We've seen all of these. Here, we'll take that off. There we go. Hey, too, we're going to talk about this next week. Um, David Pancake, his wife has had some uh, surgery recently, and they're looking to raise a little bit of money from a, through a GoFundMe to help cover some of the medical expenses. He did the background here. <laughs> Not in my place, but... Oop, there we go. <clears throat> this background here image that I've used since practically the beginning of the show. Um, so I'd love to uh, share a link with you. I'll try to get it into the show notes here and definitely be talking about it a little more next week, but I, just a heads up on that. And thank you very much for it. There's that beautiful box. So Dungeons & Dragons Classic Collection Monsters A to C from WizKids. Pick one up if you can find one. I think at 100 bucks they're still reasonable. And, uh, hey, Gift, thanks for popping in. Doing just fine. Just finishing up the show. I do want to say also, boop, 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 let's pop that off and then we'll pop this back on. Yeah, that's not how that works. Back over to here. I want to say thanks to everybody who uh, checked out the show today. It's very greatly appreciated. If you uh, have the time, Mondays at 10 a.m., we do the show live on Twitch, and then we archive it on YouTube. Follow us on Twitch. Join the chat if you can. Subscribe on YouTube. Click the little bell so you get updates. Be sure to give plus or uh, thumbs ups on all the videos that you like and enjoy. Greatly appreciated. Our thanks also to our Patreon supporters. Tom Tullis from Fat Dragon Games. Rick Hershey of Fat Goblin Games. Carlos Lysing of Castle Entertainment. Heath Farndon of the NDPD and D20. Dave O'Brien of Four Quacks Games. And Shane Bradley, a DM Extraordinaire. 
This has been the OK Grognard Show from beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Uh, Bye-bye.